Hi everyone, welcome to Java Techie. In this tutorial, we'll discuss how to create custom validator in Spring Boot. Okay, all right. Before we start implementing the code directly, let me tell you when do we need to create a custom annotation for validation. Let me walk you through one scenario. So if you can remember, already I explained how you can validate your bean or how you can validate your request, right? If anyone not aware about that, you can go to my YouTube channel and you can search for the video called validation and exception handling. Okay, this is what the particular video. So I'm just explaining here how you can add the custom annotation for validation rather than using the default annotation. Okay, so if you can go through this DTO class, I have created one class called employee and I have couple of field here and you can see these are the default annotation given by Spring Boot validation starter dependency. And you can see here to validate the first name should not be empty or not null. I directly use the annotation at the rate not blank. Similarly, to avoid not null and not empty, you can use the annotation called not blank. And also see here, I just added both of the annotation and these two annotation, you can merge to a single annotation, something like not blank. And also for email, I have the pattern to validate at the rate email. Now, if I will hit this request, let me do some mistake. Let me pass the first name as a null or if I will not specify anything, let me space um, pass it as empty. And similarly, let's say this also I will make it empty. Okay. Department. Now, if I will send the request, I will get the list of input validation error. First name should not be null or empty department and email. These are the default annotation for validation I have added in my code. Fine. Now let me send the correct request. Then I will show you at what situation you really need to use your own validator. Okay. So let me add the valid input here. So this should be something like gmail.com or outlook.com, whatever domain you can configure. Now if I will send the request, you will get the response now. You can see here the ID is auto generated. Then all the values accepted because the request is sanitized properly. But did you notice one thing? If you will check here, I have one field called employee type and the employee type, if you will go and check in your DTO, either it should be permanent or it should be vendor or contractual, right? Let me, this should be either from these three values. A employee can be a type of permanent to that organization or it can be vendor or it is working something as a third party payroll or it, same you can consider as a contractual. But rather than giving these two input, I can give any value here. Now if I will give something like some random string and if I will send the request, it is allowing me because there is no validation added from the application to restrict the user input, right? So in this kind of scenario, where you want to restrict users to pass only allowed field, then you should create your own validation or you can create your own annotation to validate that particular field. I cannot use your not blank or not empty, right? Because I want to give the value and that value should be part of these three, either or permanent or vendor or contractual. But I cannot give some random value. My application should restrict those random value. So this is what something you can achieve by creating our own custom annotation for validation. So let's quickly demonstrate this in action. Let's get started. This is just a simple application. There is no complex logic behind the scene. If you'll go and check in the controller class, I'm just taking the input and I'm just validating it. And if you will go to the flow next to the service, I'm just creating one random number for employee ID and then I'm just returning it. You can connect to your DB and you can write your actual logic. But my intention here to just explain how can you create the custom validator using the Java annotation. Fine. Now again, if you will go and check the handler class, I have the exception throwing from the controller. If there is a 
a bad request or the input is incorrect this default exception you will get from application so i just created one advice class to handle those exception that is how you can see the result field name and corresponding error message just we checked right with the invalid input but let's create the custom annotation for validation let me close all the class then i will simply create a package new package i will name it something like validation or annotation better let me keep it validation fine then first i need to create one annotation and you know how to create annotation in java the way you are creating the class interface in a similarly you have option to create the annotation and just give the annotation name something like i will give validate employee type okay just enter it now let me zoom this this is how your annotation class looks like now again you need to add few predefined annotation to tell to the java this is what the annotation i created fine so first you need to tell where exactly you want to implement this whether it is in class level or in method level or field level so you can specify that so i will specify i want to implement this annotation on field level and on parameter level okay fine this is the enum element type if you will check you can find you can use that particular annotation on field level method level parameter level or constructor level you can check what all level can be possible to implement a annotation now next step you need to define the retention okay let me use that annotation this annotation came from java itself guys okay now this annotation here you want to specify the retention policy at what time you want to implement this annotation whether at run time or in some other time so you can specify something like retention policy dot run time okay there are if you check this particular enum there are also couple of field you can implement the annotation at class level or at run time level or at source level so for our scenario i just want to implement at run time level now also you need to annotate this documented now the next annotation you can define the constraints when i say constraints who is going to validate this annotation who is the class where the actual validation logic written for this annotation so you can define that constraint and you can define validated by and just create a class give that class name here so that this annotation java will understand okay this particular annotation will point to this class whatever you will, you will write here okay so let me write something like employee type validator dot class now this is the class who will use this particular annotation i mean if you will use this annotation the validation logic should be written in this particular class this class will take the responsibility to validate that particular annotation okay now let me create this class i'll keep in the same package now let me zoom this so if you observe here this class implements from constant validator now you need to specify the type generic when i say type generic here in the constant validator as part of the type you need to tell what annotation will use this class so for our case the annotation name is validate employee type and for which type of field you are going to implement that particular annotation for validation for our case if you'll go and check the employee class let me go to the dto if i will check the employee class the field for what we are going to validate that is of type string so i can specify the type string here fine then i just need to override the method is valid so here you can change the field as well or you can change the name of the method argument let's change it to employee type now what i'll do since i have to validate two field either that field should be permanent or contractual what i can do i can create a array or list as per your wish you can create for now i'll create a list of string let's say employee types equal to 
rs dot as list of I will give two input. One is permanent and another one is contractual or bender, whatever you want. Let me keep it bender. Okay. Now simply whatever the input will be passed as part of this particular argument, I will check that whether that field or that particular value contains in this list or not. If it is contents, then well and good. That field is there will be no error on that field or there is no validation error on that specific field. If it will return false, then it will throw the validation error message. Okay. So I will just simply check whether that employee type is present in this list or not. I can use the contents. Fine. Let me format this. Now, since this is the annotation, we can define the default message. You can write something like um, public string message. Then what is the default message? You can specify default and give the message name. Like I will specify the default message something like invalid employee type. It should be you can give your meaningful uh, statement here. Okay, it should be either permanent or vendor. Fine. This is what the default message you need to provide. It is not mandatory. If you will specify this particular message, then while using that annotation, the way we have the option to define the message, you can also override those statements. Okay, but if you will not give anything, this is what the default message you will get. Fine. Then you need to define this annotation from the specific group. So rather than do that, what I will do, I will copy it from this. Okay, these two you need to define in your custom annotation. So I will go to the this annotation and I will just add this statement. Fine then. We created the custom annotation and from that custom annotation we are telling to the Java or Spring validation framework that please use this class as a constant input validation. And what this class is doing? If you open this class, we have the logic here. We are just hard coding the field. When I say hard coding, because these are the expected value I am expecting from the end user. And if user, user will give some different value which is not present in my list, then I want to throw the constraint violation exception. Okay, that is how I created the annotation and its its constraint class for the validation. Now let's use this annotation directly. So this particular field I want to validate with these two value. So I can simply use email or what is the okay employee right validate employee type this is what my own custom annotation let me write it down fine this is what the custom annotation now let's check whether this particular annotation is working or not if you want to override the message you can define your own message here but let's check with the default message now that's cool let me run the application so here application restarted now let me quickly go to the postman and here now let's try with the invalid input okay now let me hit the request we are getting the error message, right? Invalid employee type, it should be either permanent or vendor type. So these are the two, either permanent or vendor you need to give. So let me give the permanent. Now if I will send the request, there will be no error. Again, let me try with the vendor. Okay, the, okay, it should be in the lower case, I guess, because that is what I defined in my um, validator class so this should be in small the the way we have here the value the same input user need to pass okay you can add the equals ignore case that is fine or you can make all the input as uppercase and we can validate that but that's fine you need to follow the same input now let me give the lower vendor send the request there is no error right 
now here i am restricting to the user to pass either permanent or vendor by creating my own custom annotation so you can find n number of scenario in your real time day to day work to create your custom annotation for validation and even though this is a small concept but definitely this will help you in your day to day work please do let me know in a comment section if you have any doubts that's all about this particular video guys thanks for watching this video meet you soon with a new concept